You just bought GTA Online and you have no idea what to do as a level one. Well, today in this video, I will go over how to start as a level one in GTA Online so you can make enough money to do whatever you want in this game. Stick around so I can show you how to become a millionaire in GTA Online. So without further ado, let's jump into it. All right, so currently right now, I'm on a new account. And as you can see up top, I am a level five, but that's not actually how we're gonna start out. Because currently right now, I'm on a next gen console actually i'm on a ps5 this is the first time i'm ever using a ps5 so i'm kind of figuring this out i'm mainly an xbox guy but anyways we're going to start out as a level one and i want to start out as a level one because i want to capture every single person that just got gta online this includes old gen players pc players the next gen console players they start out with four million dollars to start out with and you have to spend three million of it on certain things in the game but anyways we're not going to do that today we're going to start out as a true level one but i'm on next gen so how you do that is you go over to manage characters and yeah we're gonna be thrown into the clouds right here all right so we're now at the police station and we can either select that same character that i was just with that level five or i can just make a new character which that's exactly what we're gonna do and this will truly put us as a level one on a next gen console so yeah let me customize this character real quick and then we'll get going oh yeah here's in my opinion probably the most important part about your character i mean all this other stuff really doesn't matter just how you want your character to appear but the most important thing is to absolutely max out stamina because there's one thing that'll make your life a lot easier if you have decent stamina so all we want to do is just max out stamina then yeah the rest it really doesn't matter too much yeah we want stamina maxed out because of the junk energy time trial we'll go over that later on today in this video but yeah here's our character right here got some weird eyes up eyes are kind of pissing me off but i don't care let's get into it all right and there we go we just spawned into gta online and now we are a true level one so first things first i do not want to be in a public session we don't want to get griefed on so we're gonna go to a private session all right so now we're in a private session now first things first um we're actually going to go and do the first dose missions i think in my opinion that's going to be our best way to go as far as just starting out so we need to go to this r right here there's two r's right here there's one to do missions for ron which is going to be labeled smugglers ron but then this one is also for ron but this one's labeled los santos drug wars this is the one we want to go to first so yeah i'm gonna have to steal a car somehow since we don't own anything right now oh oh i'm being stupid wow okay i almost forgot i almost forgot let's go to the internet first we're actually gonna make a purchase right now i also forgot i had thirty-five thousand dollars off of that other account um so yeah let me get rid of that thirty-five thousand dollars real quick because we truly want to start out as a level one no shortcuts no anything okay i just bought a dominator oh i can't store that vehicle god dang it hold on yeah i need to get a garage so we're gonna get this garage right here absolutely free so yeah let's do that and then since i actually accidentally have $35,000 on the other character. We're going to get rid of that. Yeah, it carries over, which is kind of annoying, at least for this video that I'm trying to make, because I want you to start out as a level one. So yeah, we're going to get rid of $35,000 right there. So now we have $887. That's not going to help us really at all. But I actually wanted to come here because we want to go to Warstock Cash and Carry, which is this tab right here. I'll show you exactly what I just did. You want to go up on your D-pad and you want to scroll down to internet. You want to click internet and then you want to go to the travel and transport have and you want to go here scroll down a little bit until you see war stock cash and carry click that and then click to sort by price and there's a free vehicle right here that we absolutely want to get the duke o death now this thing is pretty armored it's not the best armored vehicle in the game but it is the free armored vehicle in the game so yeah this is going to help us out a lot so yeah we're actually going to be using this vehicle so there we go duke of death is now ours all right so now what we're going to do is we're going to go over and we're going to do something that we can actually do once a day and this is going to be a way to easily get fifty thousand dollars which is pretty nice all right so we're actually going to do the junk energy time trial this is the reason why i wanted you to max out your stamina already to start out with so yeah we're going to go over here and we're going to do the junk energy time trial all right here we go junk energy time trial we have a part time of a minute and 20 seconds so yeah we're on this electric bike uh you can press down on your left joy con to actually get a boost yeah luckily this specific location isn't bad at all almost wrecked right there and what i recommend you do when you're just starting out as a level one when you do this is that whenever you boost instead of repeatedly tapping the a button or the x button just hold it down when you're boosting so you can maintain your stamina because your stamina could be an issue as a low level if you're a high level watching this and you have no idea what i'm talking about just try this as a low level it can be pretty tough because you have to manage your stamina but there we go we managed our stamina very well and we actually boosted our stamina earlier so we got it fifty one thousand dollars that's pretty nice all right so now now we're going to head 
head over and start up the first first dose mission. All right, so as you can see, we've made it all the way to that R on the mini map. So it's going to be this icon right here. We have to help out Ron with a situation. But first, I'm actually going to go inside. I'm going to actually purchase some snacks because this mission could be a little bit difficult for us just because we're a low level. But yeah, this is definitely the best mission to do when you're a low level. So yeah, let's get into this and let's see what's up. All right, here we go. We're starting out with the first first dose mission right here. It's called Welcome to the Troop. Yeah, we have to sit through this pretty long cutscene, but essentially it's going to be like, oh, look, here's Dax and here's all the other characters, blah, blah 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 but then some bad stuff happens oh no and yeah here comes people shooting at the troop and yeah Dax even though he knows that we're a level two. Oh yeah we did rank up from level one to level two since we're now a level two he's like oh yeah you gotta defend me even though he has a nice AR all I have is a pistol all right so yeah here we go all I have is a pistol <laughs> which is very fun so yeah we have to take out a decent amount of people oh my god the buttons feel so much weirder on PS5 this is so weird oh my god yeah I'm on red health and that's when we need to eat snacks once we get to like red health we need to like calm down eat some snacks they go back to shooting all right so we took out all the lost mc members now we need to go up to dax and he's outside right here we're gonna act like we're talking to dax and then yeah we're just gonna start walking away all right so essentially during that whole debacle the lost mc members stole dax's rv and we need to go and collect that rv so we need to go over here and there's a boat right here so yeah we need to go on the other side of the alamo sea right here and then we need to take out even more people more lost mc members so we can actually steal dax's journey so we can deliver it back to Dax. All right, so here we go. Yeah, these are all the people that we need to take out. Oh, we're level three already. Nice. Oh, yeah. Our goal as far as ranking up is to get to level 11. I think level 11 is the magic number, at least for us right now. And the reason for that is because once you're a level 11, oh, geez, I am not used to eating snacks on a PS5. Dude, like the D pad's in a different spot. So it's like weird. Anyways, we want to become a level 11 because once we're level 11 in free mode, aircraft can start spawning in for us. And that's going to be pretty huge for the next thing that we're gonna do to actually make money. All right, so here we go. We've made it back to this place and Dax is gonna get in and then he's gonna show us a place that he wants to take us. Yeah, Dax wants to take us to an abandoned warehouse and this abandoned warehouse is gonna be called the Freak Shop and this is gonna be where we can actually start up the rest of these missions from. All right, so here we go. This is the Freak Shop that Dax wanted us to go to and there we go, mission pass. Now for this actual mission, we got $20,000 but we are going to be getting a first time bonus and we also ranked up to level four, which I really appreciate appreciate that. So yeah, there you go. As you can see in the top right hand corner, we just got awarded $50,000 for doing the first dose mission. So yeah, all these missions that we're going to be doing, they're going to give you first time bonuses. That is the main reason that we're actually doing all of these missions right now. All right. So actually, before we start up the next first dose mission, we're actually going to go over to the Diamond Casino. Uh, Yeah, we want to press left on the D-pad. And there we go. We just purchased our Diamond Casino membership. We had to pay $500 for that, but we got 5,000 chips and one chip equals one dollars so that's essentially five thousand dollars so we profited just off of that and then we're actually going to go over here and we're going to get the visitor bonus which is going to be another thousand chips but yeah that's not the reason we came here we came here to actually spin the lucky wheel we get one opportunity to spin the lucky wheel each day so you can get a lot of different things off of this wheel you can get rp which sucks you can get cash you can get chips which those two are good you get clothing which i don't care about mystery item which it's a mystery uh, you can get a vehicle discount which we don't really care about right now and we can get a podium vehicle which a podium vehicle would be very nice. All right, here we go. Let's see what we're going to land on right here. So let's spin the wheel. And all right, what are we going to get? Can I get a podium vehicle just for the fun, please? Okay, no, we're not going to get a podium vehicle. We're very close. Oh, nice. A very good piece of clothing. A blue Savannah short sleeve. Okay, okay. I'll try it on. But first, let me go cash in my chips. So there we go. That was $6,000 right there. Very, very nice. So we're going to go over here. We need to look at that shirt that we just got. Where is it? We got this shirt. Okay, okay. Um, I wish that top button wasn't button it looks like we have a stick up our butt with the freaking top button button you know what screw it i'll put on a tank top instead there you go <laughs> there we go yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we changed our outfit up a little bit instead of that stupid shirt with the top button button we have a tank top so we're showing off our absolute physique right here all right so before we jump into the next first dose mission i also want to go to this store right here so we can purchase some more snacks because snacks are going to be our best friend during these first few missions since you know these missions are not the easiest thing in the world but there we go we got as many 
many snacks as we could. And now we're going to do one more thing. All right, so we're actually going to go to ammunition right here. We're going to see what weapons we can actually purchase. All right, here we go. Oh, uh, a lot of things locked here. Very nice. Oh, but we can actually purchase a precision rifle. Yeah, I'm not a fan of the precision rifle. Oh, we can purchase a homing launcher. That's going to be actually very useful for us. So we're going to purchase that. Very expensive, though. That's $75,000. Oh, uh, then, yeah, I'm going to purchase a special carbine right here. I use this weapon a lot on my other accounts. And then I just got this pistol for free, but I'm going to put a suppressor on it. This is going to be our suppressed weapon. So we can do some missions stealthy. And there we go. I think that's pretty much all I need. I'm not getting a shotgun. I don't like the shotguns that you can get at the beginning of the game. Uh, but yeah, now it's time for us to actually get into the second first dose mission. All right, here we go. We're getting into the next first dose mission, which is going to be designated driver. All right, so we've made it over to the terminal and we need to hook up to a trailer and we need to get a truck cab and found a nice truck cab right here. So yeah, we now need to hook up to these party supplies right here. Dax wants to throw a party for, you know, moving into town. So all the party supplies are on the back of this trailer. And now we just need to deliver the party supplies to the freak shop. And there is a big blockade in the middle of the road. And oh yeah, that is definitely the lost MC. That is not good at all. Uh, yeah, hopefully we can just drive around them or through them. And yeah, hopefully we're good to go, right? I mean, our trailer health is kind of dwindling and oh, look at that. We're on fire. Awesome. So yeah, we need to detach from this trailer pronto. And yeah, the trailer just blew up. So yeah, Dax can't throw a party anymore. All right. So now Dax wants us to go to the Lost MC Clubhouse, which is in town. And then he wants us to, you know, take out a few people there. He wants us to just ruin their day, just like how they just ruined our day. All right. So we've made it to the Lost MC Clubhouse. And oh right, yeah, we need to enter the MC Clubhouse. But the problem is there's a lot of MC, you know, Clubhouse members. So we are going to actually have to start shooting a bunch of people like so. So yeah, since we just bought the, oh geez, I am losing health. All right. Anyways, since we just bought that special carbine, yeah, now we can actually take out people a lot easier. Not the other way around. Yeah, still as a level four, we do not have a lot of health. So yeah, we need to be very careful during these missions because you can die pretty easily as you just saw. And don't be discouraged by uh, you dying as a low level. I mean, it is very, very difficult to do these missions as a low level. Hey, good thing I got snacks right before this mission. Yeah, this mission's a lot harder than that first mission. But it's not even the hardest one. These missions are going to get even harder than this. Okay, there's one more guy around the corner right there. Very nice. So there we go. We took out everyone. All right, so Dax wants us to collect this grass that's right in here. And then once we've collected all this grass we need to go back to the freak shop which is like a quarter of a mile away then we should be good to go all right and there we go we've made it back to the freak shop all right and there we go mission passed oh uh, we got fourteen thousand dollars from that mission plus another fifty thousand dollars for the first time bonus i forgot to mention this too our goal is to try to get two million two hundred thousand dollars and currently right now we're sitting at eighty one thousand dollars so yeah from this point forward it is very important for us to try to save all of that money that we make from the first dose last dose missions then all the other things that we're going to do so we can actually purchase that thing that we want to try to get. You know, I'll just show you what I actually want to get. Our goal is to buy a Kasatka right here. It's going to cost us $2,200,000. There's going to be three very big items that we are going to try to purchase. The first is going to be the Kasatka right here. So that is why we are trying to work towards getting $2,200,000. And we have a long, long ways to go, but I'm going to show you the best way to get that first $2,200,000. All right, here we go. We're jumping into the third first service mission right here which is going to be fatal incursion and yeah this first dose mission this is probably the second hardest first dose mission in my opinion so yeah we need to focus it up right here but luckily since we got the duco death this should be a lot easier to do and i'll show you why all right so we made it over to stab city and yeah we need to destroy the lost mc's property so we need to find like barrels like this right here we need to shoot these barrels and we have to slowly destroy all their property or as much property as we can so yeah luckily we're in a duke of death so this shouldn't be very difficult at all because everyone's trying to shoot at us but they can't really take us out because we're just chilling in duke of death all right i think i've run into a little bit of a problem i think i'm running out of things i can blow up at least like this i don't see any more like barrels like that i can just shoot and blow up yeah so i think i'm gonna have to take out the rest on foot all right here's a bike right here there we go there we go oh oh here's a barrel i missed this barrel from earlier but yeah we had to shoot this barrel and none of the bikes right next to that barrel blew up so i'm gonna have to do this number there we go all right all right we took out enough things oh my god oh my 
my god okay so yeah now let's get out of here now we need to go to miller's fishery because we want to go to miller's fishery because we need to go collect some methodology for dax he for some reason wants some methodology and yeah we have to go take care of that for him all right so we've made it over to miller's fishery and yeah we have to find 10 units of methodology so what we need to do is we need to go in here and there's two units of methodology right here there's two all right, here's another thing that's three all right so another two units are down here so that's gonna be four and five all right so here's two more units that's six and seven in the back of this like rundown boat so that's eight and then the last two are gonna be on the pier right here so yeah here we go these are the last two units and now what we're going to do is we're gonna get into this plane right here and then we're gonna fly all the way back to the freak shop all right and there we go we've landed this plane in the storm drain all right and there we go mission pass as a third first dose mission that we've completed we made eighteen thousand dollars there plus a fifty thousand dollar first time bonus let's jump into the next one all right here we go we're jumping into the fourth first dose mission right here it's gonna be uncontrollable substance all right so yeah pretty much we are tripping out right now yeah dax really just sent us on a wave of whatever the heck this is so yeah this mission is very very weird but there's not really much to it um yeah we just have to follow dax right now i'm not really gonna talk too much about this mission just because there's really no tips i can really give you anything like that you just do it and then boom you get paid <laughs> all right and there we go we survived that trip uh we get paid for that we get paid fourteen thousand dollars for that we have two more first dose missions that we need to get into all right here we go we're jumping into the fifth first dose mission right here make war not love all right so we need to go to the hippie camp which is going to be on the other side of this hill um yeah i like to take the back way to get here uh yeah we have to destroy a bunch of lab equipment and yeah there's gonna be a decent amount of people we have to take out so let the fun begin so yeah we have to go to these tents where there's a bunch of lab equipment and then there's gonna be like maybe something i can blow up yeah there's a little tanker right there um yeah i don't have any like throwable weapons like grenades anything like this i'm gonna have to take it out like this there you go one lab has been destroyed that's all the lab equipment that needs to be destroyed. So now we need to go and find a hippie van, which here's one right here. And we need to check the GPS of where there's other van locations across the map. All right, and there we go. We just found the other locations for the other delivery vans. So now we're going to get back into our Duke of Death. And now we need to destroy three more delivery vans. All right, here's a van right here. I have a homing missile. Yeah, this mission is where the homing missile is really going to come into play. There we go. Here's another delivery van right here. So we're just going to shoot a nice missile their way. I didn't mean to get in this car yeah but anyways we have one more delivery van that we have to take out all right here we go the last van is somewhere down here here. You need to shoot a missile towards that van right there. And there we go. Another delivery van has been destroyed, but we're not done just yet. All right. So now Dax wants us to go to the altruist camp where there's even more delivery vans. All right. So we've made it over to the altruist camp. We have to take out three more vans, which is going to be a little annoying. So one van is right there. Very nice. Well, how are we stuck on a bench? Yeah. Yeah. This is ridiculous. I'm stuck on a bench. No, I'm not dying because I got stuck on a bench. That is ridiculous. Ridiculous. Bro, why are we... And there goes my door, so we're not going to be as armored. Yeah. How in the world do I get stuck on a bench? Fine, fine. We're doing this on foot. This is ridiculous. Get stuck on a bench. All right, there we go. We just ranked up to level eight, which is very nice, but we still need to take out two more vans. There's a van right there. That was a little risky. Should realize that, but one more van we need to take out, which that van is going to be right there. Yeah, now a Valkyrie is going to be charging after us. No! Oh, my God. God, dude, we did not need to die there. That's so stupid. Okay, yeah, there's a Valkyrie. So, yeah, we need to shoot this Valkyrie out the sky. My homing missile can land. Here, I'll just won't home on it this time. Jeez. All right, so, yeah, now we just need to get out of here. We should be good to go. Yep, and there we go, mission pass. We have one more first dose mission that we need to tackle. All right, here we go. We're jumping into the last first dose mission, which is going to be off the rails. Now, first things first, we need to go all the way to Humane Labs, which kind of sucks. But, yeah, this is going to be the hardest first dose mission. All right, so we've made it over to Humane Labs. And, yeah, it'd be nice if we can do this stealthy. Okay, let's take out that guy first. We don't have to do this mission stealthy, but it'll just be a lot easier easier on yourself if you're able to do it stealthy all right so yeah i was able to make it through here stealthy that's probably like the first time in a long time i've actually done this stealthy now we need to go to the loading bay there's some more people we need to take out okay there we go i think everyone's been taken out now so yeah now we need to search the loading bay for intel which here it is right here and we need to send a photo of this to 
Dax. All right, so yeah, now we need to open up a bunch of crates. We gotta have to look for chemicals that we want to give to Lab Rat. All right, there we go. We just collected all the chemicals. Now we need to take out this thing right here so we can actually escape the loading bay. And yeah, now Dax wants us to stop a train. So yeah, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to beat the train to the switching station so we can switch to the tracks for the train. So I guess it kind of gets derailed. I don't know. Something happens to the train and we're trying to send the train the wrong way. It's essentially what we're doing. All right, so there we go. We are now going to pull this lever and the train is going to switch and go the other way on the train tracks. All right, so here we go. We've made it over to the spot where the train just wrecked. So yeah, now we need to search the train for the chemicals. We need to search for even more chemicals, which is obviously incredibly fun. Oh, there's already a helicopter here. So yeah, we need to find five different chemicals that look like that. So there you go. That's one. We need to find four more. All right, here's the second chemical. Oh yeah, there's the helicopter. Another helicopter's back. Very nice. All right, here's the third chemical right here. Here's the fourth chemical. All right, and there we go. That is the last chemical we need to find. All right, so essentially Dax wants us to get into this truck right here, the Brigade 6x6, and take it back to the Freak Shop. All right, and there we go. We've made it back to the Freak Shop. All right, and there we go. Mission passed. That is the last first dose mission we need to complete. We got $20,000 for that. We're also going to get a bigger first time bonus for completing this specific first dose mission. So there you go. As you can see in the top right, we just got a first time bonus of $250,000. All right, so essentially for doing all those first dose missions, we got I think $500,000 just worth of first time bonuses, which is exactly what we wanted with these first dose missions. So now we're sitting at $538,000. So I would like to do the last dose missions at some point, but we have to wait for Dax to contact us. All right, so actually what I'm going to do first is I'm going to go back to the property locations and I would like to get another garage because we're about to do something very shortly that's going to make us a little bit more money. But first I need to store another vehicle. All right, so I've currently made it over to this spot on the map right here and this is where i actually want to jump into our next thing that we're going to do to make money and right here this vehicle right here i stole this vehicle off the street and this vehicle is a sedan you can see that in the bottom right hand corner you press down on the d-pad and yeah you can see that this is a cheval surge and it's a sedan class vehicle and the reason we want a sedan is because we are trying to find a certain sedan on the street so yeah i have to drive around try to find this vehicle the vehicle that we're trying to find is going to be a sedan sentinel xs and the sentinel xs is a sedan so that's why driving around in a sedan will increase the likelihood of another sedan to spawn in is that it is this is what i'm looking for oh you that's terrible it's a sentinel it's not a sentinel xs what a troll that is such a troll come on game oh that's it that's it that's it this is it this is it this is it right here i can confirm this is it this is it right here i gotta take out the cops so i gotta take out the oh i should take out the guy driving the thing Okay, okay, I took out the driver. Okay, go, 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 go. This is it, this is it. This is one of the rare runs. Go, 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 go. This is the Sentinel XS. We need to go, because I cannot die right now. I cannot die with this vehicle. Okay, sorry, I should have been a little bit more clear. Yeah, I went to that specific location because there's a rare spawn location of Sentinel XSs. There's two. There's like a purple one that I did one time and I made a video about it. And then there is a yellow one, which is the one we have right now. But yeah, now we need to lose the comps. And once we lose the comps, I'm going to put insurance on this thing. So we now just have it because, yeah, this is a big deal right now. This is a big deal because we're going to make a lot of money with this thing or we're going to try to at least. All right. So we need to repair this vehicle. And then all I want to do is I want to go over to loss and theft protection. Yeah, we want to put a tracker. and We will put full coverage. So we're entitled to this vehicle no matter what. That's huge. Very nice. Yeah, that's all I need. Dude, I love the yellow on this vehicle. I like this version better than the other rare version. All right. So now we want to go over to this icon on the map, this icon right here. And we are going to start our journey to do an HSW time trial. And we need to do like a little introduction for HSW. So yeah, we need to open up house garage. And then yeah, we pretty much get a cutscene and whatnot. But yeah, we're gonna have to test drive this vehicle. And we have to do a time trial, I think in like eight minutes, something like that. All right, here we go. We should have to do an HSW time trial, like an introduction time trial. And we need to beat a part time of eight minutes and 10 seconds. And car, please get out of my way. Thank you. Um, yeah, usually I complete this in like six minutes, 30 seconds. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. Oh, I also failed to mention if we beat Hal's time, this par time in the bottom right hand corner, we can take an HSW vehicle, aka that Sentinel XS that we just stole, and we can take it to the LS car meet and we can get our HSW vehicle upgrade for free, which is very, very nice because like most HSW vehicle like upgrades are going to be roughly like a million dollars, like some a lot more expensive than others. But yeah, turning like, I don't know, let's just say a million dollar payment into a zero dollar payment this early on into our GT 
GTA Online career is absolutely huge. My goodness, I cannot drive today. I don't know what's up. Maybe it's because it's the first time I'm on a PS5. I don't know. Maybe that's going to be my excuse. All right, here we go. Here's the finish. Yeah, we're going to finish this right in roughly like seven minutes. Yeah, that was brutal. I kind of put it together towards the end, but my goodness. But there we go. As you can see at the bottom left, the How Special Works upgrade can be applied. So what we're going to do now is we are going to call in our Sentinel XS, and we're right across the street from the LS car meet. So here's our Sentinel XS, our beautiful Sentinel XS that we just stole off the street. The rare vehicle we just stole off the street. And yeah, now we just need to enter the LS car meet. All right, so yeah, we have to sit through this long cutscene and whatnot, which is going to be fun. All right, we just sat through that cutscene, but now we need to go over here and we need to purchase a membership for $50,000. This is going to be worth it. It's going to be worth it very shortly. So there we go. We just paid $50,000 for that and we just became level 10 because of that, which is very interesting. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to go over to my car, which is right here, and we need to take this into the HSW workshop. So what we're going to do is we're going to click this HSW upgrade and there you go. We can get this Sentinel XS and we can put the HSW performance upgrade on for absolutely free. So yeah, let's do that. Now, boom, there we go. Now, honestly, this is probably one of the slower HSW vehicles in the game, but yeah, it could still do an HSW time trial and that's exactly what we're going to do right here. All right, so we're going to do an HSW time trial, but first we're right across the street for something that can set up the acid lab right here. So yeah, I mean, we're a little all over the place right now, but since we're so close to this, we're actually going to do this right now. So this is a setup. We're going to have to set up our acid lab equipment, that big brigade six by six that we stole during that last mission of the first test missions. All right, there we go. We just loaded all the lab equipment. So yeah, now we need to just enter the truck and then take it back to the freak shop. All right, and there we go. We have delivered the lab equipment to the freak shop and there we go. Our acid lab is fully set up. So yeah, that is technically the first business that we have purchased. I mean, technically, uh, we still have to pay $750,000 to actually like fully set up the acid lab. All right, so we've made it over to HSW time trial. It's going to be the Pacific Bluffs location, which I feel like it's always this location. I mean, not literally always, but I swear I get this location so much. But yeah, this is probably my second least favorite HSW time trial because we have to go from here, this HSW icon, and we have to go all the way over here. We have to go to this lighthouse, like right there. So we're going to have to travel over six miles in essentially four minutes with not the fastest HSW vehicle probably one of the slowest ones all right here let's start this up attempt number one ready set go all right here we go now the reason that we're doing this is because every time we do an hsw time trial for that week we'll get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars and currently right now i'm recording this video on wednesday it is currently wednesday december 20th right now so tomorrow there should be a new event week which will lead to a new hsw time trial which will be another opportunity for me to get two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so yeah this is definitely a very efficient way to get money the problem is, is that some of these HSW time trials can be a little bit difficult like this one. I mean, so far I'm doing a pretty decent job, but also, yeah, it's going to be a little bit harder as a low level just because I pretty much just have a naked Sentinel XS. Not upgraded. We, we could have put, you know, a better engine in this thing. We can put turbo in this thing, better wheels, better braking, yada, 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 but we didn't. We just put the HSW upgrade on it so we can actually do this, but I need to really stop complaining about like how slow this vehicle is. I mean, this has been a great run so far. I'm very stoked that this run is going this well. So yeah, our goal was pretty much to get onto the interstate as quickly as possible and just floor it. And we really didn't have too much issues. I mean, I was kind of just explaining everything. So I wasn't really like reacting too much, but there was really nothing to really react to. It's been very smooth so far, which is very shocking. But even with that smooth start, it's probably going to be a really close finish just because, you know, how slow this thing is. Which I mean, I understand why this is slow. You can get the Sentinel XS for free. And even if you don't want to get it for free, all you have to pay is $60,000 which I think that's the cheapest HSW vehicle. Yeah, this is definitely, in my opinion, a lot better than the Arbiter GT. If you don't understand the Arbiter GT, it's another HSW vehicle. It is terrible. You cannot control that thing to save your life. It is probably the most wild vehicle I have ever driven. Yeah, but the Sentinel XS has a lot of control compared to the Arbiter GT, and it's really showing its true colors right here. Okay, we need to turn onto this road right here, squeak right past that truck. I mean, we are flying through this. I mean, we've had nothing.
nothing to really worry about right now. So yeah, I'm going to take my time crossing this bridge, kind of line myself up back onto the dirt road. And oh my God, we are going to complete this with 10 seconds to spare with the Sentinel XS. Holy crap. That was first attempt with the Sentinel XS. When I made the video of me getting the Sentinel XS for absolutely free, it took me like hours to complete. So yeah, I am very happy with that. We even had that same time trial too. That's crazy. Wow. I guess I've gotten a lot better. <laughs> all right. Anyways, yeah, we made $250,000 from that. And all we did was we invested pretty much $50,000. No, wait, no, 60. We invested like $60,000 to it. So yeah, pretty much a profit of $200,000. So now we're sitting at $705,000, which is very, very nice. So yeah, we're going to record a little bit of this video tomorrow. So when it's a new day for me, we can do another HSW time trial. So that's another $250,000, which is absolutely huge. All right. So we're going to do one more thing before we actually start up the last dose mission. So let's go to that thing. And then, yeah, we'll jump into the last dose missions. All right. So we made it over to the next thing that I wanted to do. And it's going to be this icon on the map right here. This is called a stash house. So yeah, we're going to go inside and I'm going to show you what's going to happen in here. So with this stash house, we have to take out a bunch of dealers. If you have a grenade, which I don't have a grenade, I like to kind of throw it off the wall and let it just sit in the middle of the floor. And then it pretty much takes out most of the people, but I don't have a grenade, which sucks. So I'm going to have to actually like take out the people normally. All right. And there we go. Everyone's been taken out. So yeah, now we need to break into the safe, but we need to find a safe code, which is going to be a yellow sticky note somewhere, which is right here. Here's a yellow sticky note with the code 73, 27, and 38. So we need to put that code into here. All right, there you go. The vault is going to be open. So now we need to exit the stash house. And now we just need to leave the area and then we'll be credited with some good stuff. All right, and there we go. Stash house has been successfully raided. We got $31,000 from that. And usually if you have like businesses, like let's just say my acid lab was actually fully set up, we can get free acid lab supplies. We can get, you know, if you have MC businesses, you can get free supplies for your MC businesses all through doing that stash house. But since we don't have any of that right now, we get money and $31,000 is actually pretty good for what? Like a minute of work? Not bad at all. All right, so now it's time for us to get started with the last dose missions. I'm not gonna do all of the last dose missions right now. I'm definitely gonna do one, maybe two of the last dose missions. And then I'm gonna save the rest of them for another day. All right, here we go. We're starting out with the first last dose mission, which is going to be called, this is an intervention. Oh no. And there's some people that are taking lab rat. Oh no. So yeah, we have to go and save lab rat or I guess Dax wants to kill him. Okay, good thing you missed. So yeah, for this mission, we have to take out just a bunch of people. Nothing really special with this mission at all, but there's just a lot of people we have to take out. Like honestly, kind of comparable to the casino missions. How many people we have to take out here? That is hard though. So yeah, I think there's probably around like 70 people we have to take out, which is very, very crazy. And yeah, we're doing this as what? A level 12 or a level 12 right now. It's a lot of people for a level 12 to take out. Oh my gosh. I think they're finally retreating. No, do not die at this one. Oh, you want to run at me, huh? Sleepy time. Everyone's been taken out. Lab rat's gone, but there we go. Mission passed. We got $12,000 for that mission. But for the last dose missions, each one of them, they're going to give you a first time bonus of $100,000 for each one. There's going to be five of them total. All right, here we go. We're jumping into our next last dose mission, which is going to be unusual suspect. Our Sentinel access was really nice, but we are going to bring back out our Duke of Death. Duke of Death is going to be our missions vehicle. Any sort of missions that we're going to do, we're going to bring out our Duke of Death. Just just because it's pretty armored. And then our HSW time trials, we're gonna bring out our Sentinel XS. But yeah, what we're trying to do right here is we're trying to find different hideouts to find suspects. So we have two hideouts that we need to go to, which on the mini map are gonna be labeled A and B. So we're gonna go to A first right here. All right, so here we go. We're at hideout A, and yeah, we have to take out a few people, which is not nearly as many people as what we had to do last mission. Okay, nice. We're level 13 now. Dang, I just started this account today, and we're level 13. Not too bad at all, but yeah, now we need to go to this hippie dealer. And yeah, very nice. That's all we have to do. Now we can go to the next hideout, which is going to be hideout B. All right, so we've made it to the next locations. These are the lost MC members. So yeah, we have to take out even more lost MC members, which we've already taken out a lot today in this video. All right, there we go. Everyone's been taken out. We need to go to this lost leader. And um, yeah, we don't have to do much. We can just get close and just run away. All right, so we're at the next location. Uh, we need to take out a few more hippies. And then, yeah, we need to talk to this boss. All right, there we go. Everyone's been taken out. Uh, yeah, we need to go to this hippie boss. 
put Dax on speakerphone and yeah, I want to do this as quick as possible. So we don't really need to be close to that guy at all. We can walk away. This speakerphone is very, very clear for some reason. Oh, this is as far away as I can get. Okay, yeah, right here. All right, but that guy just told us that there's something going on at Elysian Island that we should check out because he thinks that the suspects are at Elysian Island. So yeah, let's head over there. All right, here we go. We've made it to Elysian Island. We need to find the warehouse. Um, I don't think that's the warehouse we're looking for. But the warehouse should be right here where this nice vehicle is. So, well, boom, we're here. So yeah, we need to hack a keypad, which is going to be right here. All right, there we go. We can actually get into this warehouse now. Now we need to search for clues from these kidnappers. And oh boy, would you look at that? Here's a nice clue. Photos of the whole fulligans. There's two guards that are like walking up in here. So bop and bop. Okay, nice. I took them out with silenced weapon. So no one heard a thing. All right, here's one last clue we need to take a photo of. And there we go. That's all the clues we need to get. And now we need to actually pick up this key card. And now all we have to do is just get out of here and we should be good to go. Mission pass. All right. And there we go. Mission pass. It's the second last dose mission. We got paid $16,000 plus $100,000 first time bonus. Um, I'm going to stop here for today. I'm going to continue this on another day. Hopefully tomorrow where we can actually do another hsw time draw and a bunch of other things again so i'll see you tomorrow all right, so it's a brand new day. And as you can see, it's a brand new event week. And this is the first day where the snow is on the ground. So yeah, currently right now we're sitting at $958,000. And since it's a new day, we're gonna get into doing some things that you should do at the beginning of every day. And then one thing that you should do at the beginning of every event week. Really? Really, guy? I was about to do something. You leave me no choice. Oh, I leave you no choice. Fine, you leave you no choice but to just eat shots. Hey, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't do the glitch punch how I can on the Xbox. Well, that sucks. What I was about to say before I was rudely interrupted, uh, we're here at our first thing that you should do at the beginning of every day. And it's going to be the junk energy time trial. And this one's the sewer system one. Yeah, this specific junk energy time trial is pretty easy. So yeah, you really shouldn't be having too much issues here. All right, and there we go. We just completed that time trial. Yeah, that specific location of the time trial is pretty easy. We just made 52,000 just from that. Oh yeah, also, we're not going to do any of the Christmas stuff. Like, you know, there's so Christmas events that I could do to make money, but we're not going to do any of that just because I want this to apply to everyone. So if you want me to knock over like snowmen right now or do the like the Yeti event, I'm not going to do any of that right now. All right, so now we're at the Diamond Casino. We're going to spin the lucky wheel. We should do this once a day. So yeah, let's spin the wheel and let's see what we're going to get. Uh, can we get vehicle? That'd be really, really nice. Uh, I No, we're not going to get vehicle. We're going to get chips again? I mean, okay. I'm okay with chips. That means we got $20,000 there. I'm very good with that. All right, so now we're at a stash house, and yeah, we're gonna do another stash house right here. Yeah, this time we have a little bit more health since we were a little bit of a higher level than last time. Yeah, there we go. I didn't die this time, which is very nice. All right, there we go. We just raided a stash house for $30,500. Yeah, just from all of that, I mean, that probably took us like five minutes in total. That made us $82,000. You can do all of that every day. Now we're gonna do something that you can only do every week. All right, so we made it over to the final thing, and since it's a new event week, we have a new HS every time trial that we can do. It's going to be the North Chumash location. And I just finished recording episode 63 of Loser to Luxury. And I just did this time trial, but it was with the Arbiter GT. And yeah, it was not very good. It was not a very good time. And you would think it'd be because of the snow. I don't even think it was really the snow's fault. I think it's just the Arbiter GT is that bad. But I'm very curious to see how this is going to go with the Sentinel XS. All right, so first things first, the par time is different. The par time, I think, is 14 seconds longer here. That's very nice because with the arbiter gt it was four minutes and three seconds but anyways we have to go all the way over here the ending for this time trial is right here which is going to be roughly seven miles uh we're not going to go the exact way the game wants us to go because we want to get on the interstate so we're really putting the arbiter gt to the test right here in comparison to the sentinel xs i was very pleased yesterday with how the sentinel xs did during that first time trial a time trial i usually have difficulties with that completed first attempt how's it going to do in the snow with this time time trial, which I absolutely sucked with the Arbiter GT. All right, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. First attempt right here and hopefully the only attempt. See, already, I feel like I already have way more control with the Sentinel XS. The Sentinel XS is just a control freak. So yeah, pretty much for this time trial, we have to like stay on the interstate a long, long time. Oh my God. I have so much more control in these turns. I'm so used to not having that much control. My goodness. Like you saw me slip a little bit just then. Like even that little slippage is a blessing compared to what I was dealing with 
it with the Arbiter GT. My goodness. So yeah, getting this free HSW vehicle, it doesn't mean you're getting the worst HSW vehicle, which is shocking. And I haven't even used every single HSW vehicle in the game. I will go out on a limb and say that Arbiter GT is the worst HSW vehicle. I mean, Arbiter GT, I was just slipping through all these turns. I have so much traction here and there's snow on the ground. Okay, we're about to exit the interstate right there. That's been our biggest screw up so far. And that's really even not that bad. Yeah, this has been fantastic with the Sentinel XS. Yeah, back at that exit right there, you probably didn't even really see it at all, but it was like a little gap. And with the Arbiter GT, I just kept flying right through that gap. And my goodness, it was painful. But you've probably already seen it if you tune into my Loser to Luxury series. Okay, okay, th okay, that's interesting. Um, okay, turn around, turn around, Sentinel. You got it, you got it, bud. Okay, we have like 30 seconds to complete this. I really think we have plenty of time. So let's just jump down. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, turn around, just turn around. <laughs> Wait, it's such a good run that we can afford to screw around a little bit. All right, we have 10 seconds to complete this. Okay, can we please do this first attempt? Okay, let's go around the Jersey wall. We've done that before. Yes, oh, we got that, we got that. Oh my God. Oh, I didn't even think it was that close. Less than a second to spare. First attempt with the Sentinel XS, aka the free HSW vehicle that we get. I think it took me over 30 minutes with the Arbiter GT. Yeah, this vehicle is fantastic compared to the Arbiter GT. All right, anyways, back to the reason we did that. We made $250,000 off of that. So in total for roughly, I don't know, let's just say 15 minutes of work, just right at the beginning of this day, we made $336,000. So now we're sitting at $1,350,000. $15,000. So we need less than a million dollars before we can actually purchase the Kasatka, which is very, very nice. But we still have Lasso's missions that we need to do. And then we have some other things that I want to do before we actually purchase the Kasatka. So yeah, let's jump into the next Lasso's mission. All right, here we go. We're jumping into the third Lasso's mission, which is going to be Freedmind. All right, so we're entering Freedmind HQ right here. All right, so yeah, we need to take out a few people. Uh, you don't have to do this stealthy, but it makes it a little bit easier if you do it stealthy. Oh, Okay, I've been spotted. Oh, uh, not the worst thing in the world. Uh, we can do this aggressively. All right, so we needed to head down to the basement. We need to take out a few more people. All right, there you go. Everyone's taken out. Yeah, we need to recover a lab rat, but we have to sit through a cutscene. All right, so we figured out that Dr. Friedlander is the person that captured lab rat, but now all we have to do is just take lab rat and Lucha back to the freak shop, and we should be good to go. All right, and there we go. Mission passed. We have two more last dose missions that we need to do. We got $16,000 right there, plus the $100,000 bonus that we get it. All right, we're jumping into the fourth last dose mission right here. It's going to be checking in. All right, so we've made it over to the rehab clinic that we needed to go to. And yeah, we have to take out a bunch of people so we can get Friedlander's attention. I think something like that. I just remembered, you don't actually have to take out everyone right in here. You can drive up to here in your armored Duke of Death and then bam, you get the cutscene. But yeah, this mission acts a lot like the fourth first dose mission, Uncontrollable Substance. So yeah, from this point forward, at least with this mission, it's pretty just straightforward. So yeah, I'm probably not gonna talk too much during this all right and there we go we finally survived that trip oh uh, we made sixteen thousand dollars off of that plus a hundred thousand dollar bonus but we still have one more last dose mission that we need to do so let's jump into that all right here we go we're jumping into the last last dose mission right here it's gonna be called bdkd all right so here we go we just made it to the vellum so we have to get into this vellum and then we have to go track down another plane and this plane that we're gonna track down is going to have dr freelander in it in all of his stuff all right so this is the car Cargo plane we have to hijack essentially is what Luch is telling us. We have to hijack this thing and we have to hack this thing so we can actually get into the back of it. All right, there we go. We just completed the hack. And even though we were at the front of the plane, we are going through a cutscene where we just are automatically in the back of the plane. And oh, bam, we are now inside of the plane, the big cargo plane. I know there's a lot of planes here. And then there goes our puny little vellum. So yeah, we have to get to the cockpit, but we have to take out a ton of people. All right, there we go. We've made it to the cockpit. And then all oh, there's just Freelander just chilling out in a box. And then there you go. He's just gone. So yeah, now we're flying this big cargo plane. And yeah, we have to land it at Sandy Shores Airfield. And as a level one, you actually don't have to land this thing. They're going to just send you into a cutscene of you landing. So yeah, it's not the biggest deal in the world. And of course, the cops are on us. So yeah, we're going to have to protect Dax as he's loading up the truck. Okay, Dax finally fully loaded up the truck. Uh, so yeah, now we need to take this truck back to the freak shock. But we have to lose the cops at some point. Uh oh. Oh no. Oh no. Please. Please. Please tell me we're good. Please tell me we're not stuck. This is a very awkward spot. <laughs> 
Okay. Oh my gosh. All right, all right, all right, all right. For you, don't do that. I'm assuming we're gonna have to drive the truck all the way back down, which is gonna suck. Yeah, we're gonna have to drive the truck all the way back down there, which, yeah, that's not gonna be fun. All right, we've made it back to the freak shop without destroying the truck this time, right outside the freak shop. All right, and there we go, mission pass. That's all the last dose missions. We made $10,000 there, plus another $100,000 bonus. All right, so now we're sitting at $1,660,000 after completing all the first dose and last dose missions. So now let's jump into the next thing before we can actually purchase the Kasatka. All right, so as you can see, um, I kind of went a little crazy with all the festive stuff. Uh, yeah, so like after that last Lassos mission, you spawned into Mount Chiliad with like only like a pair of shorts on. And I went to go change my clothes back and then I got carried away with all the free like Christmas stuff I could get. So I'm dressed up a little festive now. Anyways, for completing the Lassos missions, we get this free car right here, which is the Ocelot Virtue, which is going to be our new best car. So yeah, this is our first supercar that we own now. All right, so we're going to jump into the next way we're going to make money and this will get us to the two million two hundred thousand dollar mark and it's going to be the three treasure hunts all across the map so this includes collecting the stone hatchet collecting the navy revolver and collecting the double action revolver and earlier i was saying how it was important for us to get to level 11 that's why i've saved doing this last because i wanted us to get to level 11 so we can drive past airports and heliports and know for a fact that aircraft can now spawn in so yeah since we're over a level 11 now we can actually use aircraft so we're going to use this helicopter, at least at the moment, to go around and find all these treasure hunts. All right, so we flew over to the first spot that we need to scope out for one of these treasure hunts. We're going to start off by trying to find the Navy Revolver. Now, I highly recommend you look up the locations for the Navy Revolver and the Double Action Revolver. The Stone Hatchet, you don't need to look up the locations for that. But anyways, yeah, there's a clue right here to start up the Navy Revolver treasure hunt. And this clue says, can you find me? Um, It's literally my goal to find you right now. But yeah, as you can see, the bottom left says one out of five clues investigated. So now we need to go across the map and we need to investigate four more clues. All right, so the next clue is going to be over here. It's over at the end of the runway for the Sandy Shores airfield. But yeah, the clue is right over here. Um, I forgot what this is even supposed to be, but there's a bunch of grass in the way. So yeah, our clue is a bunch of grass. All right, so instead of trying to find the third clue, at least right now, as you can see on the mini map, we're going to something on the map with an M and a little target over to the right of that M. And this is where you're actually going to start up the treasure hunt for or the stone hatchet. So yeah, since we've gotten here, it says you have received a job offer from Maud to collect bounties. So here's Maud saying, hello, stranger, blah, 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 blah. She says that she's going to send me a file soon. So that's good. So this means we're starting up the treasure hunt for the stone hatchet. So we're doing the Navy revolver treasure hunt right now. And we kind of did the introduction, at least for the stone hatchet. We still haven't started up the double action revolver treasure hunt yet. And that's because we have to stay in a session for at least 20 minutes. And then we'll get a notification. And once I notification notification pops up, I'll show you what it looks like. But we're still trying to find clues for the Navy Revolver. Here's another clue. That is our third clue discovered, a nice machete. All right, so we've made it over to the fourth clue, which is going to be this right here. It's going to be a handprint on this stall. There you go. That's four out of five clues investigated. And the fifth and final clue for the Navy Revolver, it can be in impossible five locations. So yeah, this is definitely why I highly recommend you just look up these locations because it's going to be very, very annoying to just, you know, stumble upon this. So yeah, our goal right now is to try oh okay Maud literally just messaged me so yeah we received an email from Maud for our first bounty target so yeah we're trying to find this lady and yeah as you can see on our mini map there's a location of a bounty but we're not going to do that just yet we're going to try to find this last clue for the navy revolver and then we'll go try to hunt down that bounty oh yeah also the thing with the navy revolver is after you find this clue then there's going to be a guy that's going to try to come after you and he only comes after you during the nighttime. So I would like to complete this before it actually hits nighttime in GTA, just so we can be efficient. All right, so we found the last location. It's gonna be this van right here. So there's one out of five locations it could possibly be. So yeah, ooh, pretty nasty, we'll have to say, but there we go. Oh, we even ranked up for that. So five out of five clues have been investigated. And then yeah, we just got a message from an unknown caller. I'm sick of you sticking your nose where it doesn't belong. Now I'm not going to lie. What happens next won't be nice for you. 
you. Okay, whatever. Like, I don't care. I mean, actually, I do care. We're trying to make money. But yeah, right now in the game, it's, it's just past noon. It's 12 o'clock. So yeah, we need to wait for the sun to go down. So yeah, I probably won't start that up until like midnight or something like that. I don't know. But yeah, now we're going to get into our first bounty hunt right here. All right, so we've made it to the yellow circle. Yeah, we're inside of a big circle now. We're supposed to try to find wherever the heck this bounty is. So yeah, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get inside of my Ocelot Virtue. And then yeah, we're going to just drive around the area. See if we can find this bounty. Okay, you have to listen out carefully. There's supposed to be like, I don't know, like bells ringing or something like that. Was he down here? Oh, he is. Okay, where is this person? Oh, it's a she. I forgot. Oops, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah, so we can either stop them. Oh, you, yeah, no, no, no. You are not doing that. Try to stab me. Oh, the target surrender. Okay, that's not what I wanted to do. Yeah, the target surrender. We don't want the target to surrender. We want the target to die. Or I personally want the target to die just because it's going to be a little quicker for us. You can take that bounty back to mod for an extra $5,000, but I personally don't like to do that. I like to, you know, be a little bit more efficient, even though I don't even know what I'm going to do now. <laughs> oh, okay. Mod just messaged me for another bounty. So yeah, let's take a look at this. Okay. No, it's not a text. It's an email. Our second bounty. We need to find that guy and he is back in the city. Okay. So yeah, let's go find this bounty. All right. So we made it to the next location. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get my Ocelot Virtue out again and we're going to start looking for this guy. Oh, okay. Okay. We just got the message to do the next treasure hunt right here. It's this thing right here. Vanderlind at ifind.com. It says, use the photograph in this email to identify the location of the treasure. Now we'll get started with this once we find the bounty that's somewhere in here. Yeah, the treasure is gonna look something like this on the map. It'll be at a random spot for everyone. So yeah, we'll go to this right after I find this bounty. Oh, I found him. I stumbled upon him. No. Okay, there you go. He's dead. And there we go. Bounty target was killed. Uh, let me go back to my helicopter. And yeah, now let's go and start up the double action revolver treasure hunt. All right, so we've made it inside the circle and we're supposed to try to find wherever the heck this clue is. If I remember correctly, I think the clue should be somewhere over here. Oh, oh, geez. Okay, I was not ready for that. Okay, that was the slasher for the Navy revolver. I was not even trying to do that. But um, yeah, it is at night now. And yeah, so we now have this Navy revolver revolver and we got credited with fifty thousand dollars but that's not where we're gonna make the bulk of this money we're gonna make the bulk of this money from getting 50 kills with the navy revolver and then we'll earn a gta online money reward so yeah we're gonna do that at the end oh my god i had to look up the exact location for this yeah this is a little bit annoying yeah the photo that was taken was back where i was but the actual clue itself is over here the actual photo itself is like right here here. Here we go. It says, treasure tore our family apart. It ain't here no more. I moved it. You efforts will never find it. I am financially obligated to find it, so uh, you can't tell me what I can and can't do. Alright, so now we can actually find the other three clues for the double action revolver, but we're not going to do that right now. We're going to go and we're going to do our next bounty hunt, which is going to be all the way in Plato Bay. And then during our downtime in between bounty hunts, we'll go ahead and try to find some of these clues. And the clues these clues they're gonna be on the map they're the three yellow question marks that are on the map all right this is the location of the bounty right here um Oh, there it goes. Oh, there we go. That's our third bounty. We need to get two more bounties. But as we wait to get our next bounty, we're going to go and investigate those clues. All right, so we made it over to the first clue. And this first clue is going to be by this tree right here for the double action revolver. It's right here. Okay, they're not giving me... Come on. There we go. We can investigate the clue. It's an empty gun case. And there you go. One out of three clues has been discovered. Let's go to the next one. All right, so we made it over to the next treasure hunt location. Maud just messaged me. Um, let me look at this clue and then I'll take a look at what mod said. All right, there you go. Here's our next clue. It's a shovel. Very nice round point shovel. All right, so now let's see what mod said. Fourth bounty target. We're trying to find that lady. Okay. Um, Is it close by? Oh, it's actually in Grapesy. Nice. I was hoping that wasn't in Pleto Bay. So yeah, we'll do the fourth bounty target right now. Screw you! Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. That was the most raspy voice ever. I, I think you've had a smoke or two. It's okay. Not a smoker anymore. And there we go. Bounty was killed. Uh, we have one more bounty we have to go do, but we have to wait for Maud to contact us. So let's go and find the last clue for the double action revolver. Okay, Maud just messaged us for our final bounty target. Uh, I'm not going to look at that just yet. So what we need to do now is we need to look at this next clue, which is going to be in a cave over here. So yeah, this final clue is going to be 
up here inside of this cave. It's gonna be this interesting little fella. All right, there we go. Three out of three clues have been discovered. And once you find all three clues, you get a little treasure chest on your map. As you can see on my mini map, there is a treasure chest right there. Now, let me take a look at this final bounty target. See where this guy's at. This guy is in the heart of the city okay yeah we'll do that right now and then we'll go collect our double action revolver oh yeah i forgot to say right after we killed the slasher that guy that attacked us like on the beach like for the navy revolver challenge we were awarded a navy revolver with that and these other two treasure hunts that we haven't completed yet we're gonna have to go to a treasure chest and we're gonna have to collect each weapon all right so we're inside the final circle to find this last bounty so let me call in my ocelot virtue once again let me just quickly scope this place out see if i can find this target oh i found him is literally this guy right here okay that was the easiest person to find there we go he's dead and there we go bounty complete another five thousand dollars in my bank account so very shortly we should be given a location yeah there we go maud just sent us a message and as you can see there's another treasure chest on our map now and this is where we're gonna find the stone hatchet so yeah let me get to these two treasure chests and collect these weapons all right so here's the first treasure chest right here i don't even know what weapon this is going to be for so yeah let's go over here let's open it up aha here we go this is the double action revolver right here very nice looking weapon all right and there we go double action revolver has been acquired Required. So now let's go collect our stone hatchet. Oh yeah, also there's a specific challenge for each of these weapons and that's gonna give you the bulk of the money that we're looking to get. The double action revolver one is get 50 headshots. The navy revolver one is just get 50 kills. And then the stone hatchet one, the one that we're about to collect is going to be get 25 kills. Which I mean, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a chore to like complete these like challenges. But once you do, you'll get paid pretty well. Right, so the final treasure chest is right. Oh, is it on top? of this thing oh mod why when i have to climb up this thing holy inconvenient mod god i know she didn't bring her butt all the way up here my goodness yeah let's just open this chest up okay let's not open this chest up <laughs> okay let's try that again let's open the chest open the chest oh mod why why are you so inconvenient oh wait what okay i don't know how i just triggered it i was just spamming and it finally worked but yeah here's our stone hatchet very nice we got a stone hatchet now oh yeah there we go it says we have to get 25 kills with a stone hatchet to unlock a gta online reward so now we need to start getting kills so yeah i guess i'll start out with the double action revolver yeah there we go it's one headshot Oh my god, I completed it. I haven't even died yet. Holy crap. I've just been sitting here just chipping away at kills and whatnot. And yeah, there we go. We've completed it. So yeah, I'm just gonna head on and do the Navy Revolver while I'm still here. And there we go. As you can see in the top right, we got $250,000. Okay, our run finally ended. Yeah, I hadn't died a single time. It's just sitting in the wide open grape seed. So yeah, I'm gonna continue doing the Navy Revolver. It's gonna give us roughly like another $250,000. Yeah, all three of these treasure hunts gives you $250,000 a piece. I wanna know if this counts <laughs> this is so stupid does it count if we shoot cows because it'd be so much easier if we can just shoot a bunch of cows because there's just so many cows over here in grapeseed like no offense to the cows but like it'd be so much better if i can just take out a bunch of cows oh nice a buck too yeah sure oh my god it counts it counts oh my god this might be a new strategy you get all the animals i mean poor animals i'm so sorry to the animals but like as far as efficiency this might be way more efficient because these animals aren't attacking you whoa that might be really smart if you go like to grapeseed and like there's a bunch of cows that just spawn in i think that's great that is so easy it's just an easy way to get kills the problem is there's no more cows <laughs> sorry it looks like i'm serving hamburgers Okay, there we go. We just got all the kills that we needed. So we got $200,000 for that. So now we need to start getting kills with a stone hatchet. I just need to get one kill. I just need one kill to start out with. And oh, I don't have any more snacks. So this is fantastic. Give me at least one kill. And then, yeah, I can start to get going with this. No, yeah, okay. You'll see why I want to get one kill at least. All right, here's finally a car. Yeah, fortunately, I'm gonna have to get this started out like this. And yeah, this is what I was talking about earlier. You get a kill with the stone hat. No, use the stone hatchet. Yeah, there you go. You get this ability going on. You don't really take damage in this ability. You're pretty much indestructible, but there's no one near me, so I can't really use this ability right now. But anyways, I need to get 24 more kills with this thing. Oh, goodness. There's a mountain lion right here. A little mountain lion. No, no, no. <laughs> oh, these animals are hilarious. I'm so glad they brought them into GTA Online. 
All right, and there we go. That's the final kill that I needed with the stone hatchet. I should be getting $250,000 in my bank account pretty soon. And there we go. Another $250,000 in my bank account. All right, so after those three treasure hunts, we're now sitting at $2,458,000, which is well over the amount that we need in order to purchase the Kasatka. So yeah, let's go over to the internet and let's go over to Warstock Cash and Carry. And I need to go do a cutscene. I completely forgot about this. Oh, love Love that. All right. So I guess I'm going to spawn back into the city. I'm going to have to go to that cutscene and then we can actually purchase the Kasaka from there. So, yeah, in order to start up that cutscene, we need to go over to this spot right here. And then at that point, we're going to trigger something. And I'll show you what we need to do after we get to that point. All right. So we've made it over to this location. Yeah. We need to like go here. We need to contact Miguel. And Miguel Madrata wants us to go to the Diamond Casino, to the music locker inside the Diamond Casino. And then we're going to meet him there for a cutscene scene. All right, so this is the music lock and we have to go all the way here for this cutscene with Miguel Madrazo. All right, so we sat through that cutscene. So now we can actually go ahead and purchase the Kasaka. So we need to go to Warstock Cash and Carry and there we go. We can purchase this Kasaka right here. We don't need anything else with this. I mean, it would be nice one day to get the Sparrow, but I mean, for this video, I'm going to show you the bare minimum for you to make as much money as possible. So you don't necessarily need a Sparrow but it would make this a little bit nicer but that could be a purchase you make down the line but anyways we can buy this for two million two hundred thousand dollars so yeah let's go purchase that and there we go we have ourselves a beautiful cassette before we actually head over to our cassette let's actually go to ammunition let's pick up some more weapons since we're now just sitting on two hundred and sixty two thousand dollars all right so we made an ammunition yeah what can we buy now we can buy heavy sniper that's huge okay yeah so we didn't have a sniper before so getting the best sniper in the game is a pretty nice upgrade oh what else what else can I buy oh i can't buy the assault shotgun that sucks yeah this is my favorite shotgun in the game i should probably buy some grenades and some sticky bombs and whatnot oh 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 i can't get the ap pistol this is probably in my opinion the best weapon to use when you're in a car but the machine pistol is not bad either okay there we go yeah that's some improvements this is some all right so now we are gonna head over to our cassatka and we're gonna start up the way to make money from the cassatka but we have to sit through a cutscene. so yeah let me get into my Kasatka. Oh yeah, also with the Kasatka, uh, you can request a dinghy, which I have done right here. You can go to service vehicles, scroll down to your Kasatka, and there's a tab right here that says request dinghy, which is this boat right here. But yeah, here is our Kasatka emerging from the water. So yeah, let's head on in and let's go watch that cutscene. All right, so we're going down our Kasatka, and here is our man right here. This is Pavel. He's gonna help us make a lot of money. We like Pavel. Unfortunately, though, he's a little bit annoying. He kind of over explains during the first First run of the Kyo Pareko heist. But at the same time, if you're doing this for the first time, he'll give you a lot of information, which is good. All right, so now the way that we're actually going to make money through the Kasatka is going to be the Kyo Pareko heist. So in order to start up the Kyo Pareko heist, you need to go to this screen right here. You press right on your D-pad, and here you go. Um, Well, that freaking graphic right there is in the way of what's supposed to say the Gather Intel mission. And this is pretty much us scoping out this island. So we need to head over to this island, and we need to scope it out. Out, see how we're actually going to attack this heist. So yeah, let's start this mission up. So now we need to meet Dave and Kinza music at the LSA private terminal. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we made it to the LSA private terminal. And yeah, we have to sit through a bunch of cutscenes throughout this Kyo Perico heist, at least his first gather intel mission. But yeah, essentially this setup right here, we're going to sneak into a party as a tour manager. And then once we get to that party, we're going to sneak out and then we're going to scope out the island essentially. All right, so we sat through that cutscene scene um yeah now we need to drive this guy in the passenger seat to the beach party this guy to our right in the green shirt that is mr el rubio this is the guy we are trying to rob all right so yeah, we just sat through that long cut scene yeah so now what we need to do is we need to wait for this guard right here to move out the way and then once he moves out the way we can sneak on by him and then we can start scoping out the island all right so that guard finally moved out the way now we can exit the south gate all right so now what we need to do is we need to go and scope out the island. So first things first, we need to try to make it over here to the 
compound area, or at least close to it. And currently we're right here. So I'll walk you through how I like to do it. For this first one, I like to just kind of go on foot. All right, so yeah, we need to go through here. There's a big checkpoint. You want to do this part very carefully. And then yeah, at this point, we can just run through here. Don't run on the roads because there's going to be guards that are driving on the roads. Just kind of run in the grass, kind of run where there's no one at and you won't be spotted. All right, yeah, this is the compound right here. Yeah, for this first gather intel mission, they force you to go kind of in this area. Just be like, hey, that's the compound. And now we need to go and go to the communications tower. All right, so that's where we need to go right there. That's the communications tower. So we need to go there and then hack the CCTV. All right, so this is a signal box right here. So we need to hack into the signal box. All right, there we go. We've hacked into the CCTV. So now we need to go through the cameras and we need to kind of track where the Madrazo files are. And they're going to be in the basement, which is going to be this camera right here. So we need to scroll over and there it is. It's inside of the safe right there. There are the Madrazo files in there. All right, so from this point on, the game's going to force you to do some like secondary like things that aren't really like necessary for like the actual Kyo Perico heist, at least the way I want to do it. I'm going to show you what's necessary for the approach I like to use for the Kyo Perico heist. All right, so first things first, instead of actually like traveling all the way back across there, it's a little easier just to fall like that because then we respawn back outside the gates of where the party's at which is very very nice now we need to head to the north dock and then the game wants us to do some stuff at the north dock but then once we complete that i'm going to show you exactly what you need to use the approach i use for the kayo perico heist because you need to scope out a few points to do the kayo perico heist the way i like to do it all right here's the first place i want you to scope out that is not necessarily required this is going to be the main dock so yeah you just want to take a photo yeah, there we go now we're going to send it to pavel and there we go you scope out an infiltration point the main dock yeah so it's gonna be this dock right here on the map and then there's one more location i like to scope out so let me head over there real quick the next location is going to be over here just outside the compound and oh okay i didn't have to like swim underneath in order to actually find the drainage tunnel but like i'll just do it anyway just to quickly show you yeah the drainage tunnel is right there okay and this location is right here on the map just outside the compound so yeah that's all the stuff that i need to scope out in order to do the heist that's not already required so yeah i'm just gonna finish the rest of this gather intel mission out and then i'll explain to you how i'm gonna actually set up the Cayo perico heist oh yeah also i forgot to mention we're back at the airstrip right here and we're gonna scope out the secondary loot location so there's this loot location right here and as you can see there's two bundles of cash so we need to take a photo of these bundles of cash so we know where these are for the heist finale all right so now now I'm inside of this hangar right here, which is also at the airstrip here. I'll show you exactly where this is on the map. It's this building right here at the airstrip. So yeah, there's more secondary loot locations inside of here. And this is where we're going to be going during the Cayo Perico heist. So yeah, there's two loot locations there, but then there's another two locations of loot that could potentially be up here. So we climb up here. Oh my gosh. All, oh, okay. I was about to say all these were cash. Not all of them. This one right here is cash. And then the back one right here is going to be cola and cola is going to be more valuable than cash so that's what we want to get and that's all the secondary loot locations that we need to scope out and those six locations right there along with the potential of there being paintings inside of el rubio's office that should be plenty of secondary loot locations so you can fill out your loot bag which is going to be important to get the elite challenge but yeah now let's return back to los santos all right so now we're back at los santos we completed that gather intel mission but we still have to set up more of the Cayo perico heist so i'm going to show you exactly how I like to set up the Cayo Perico heist. All right, so this is our planning screen right here. We just did the gather intel mission, which is what I'm hovering over right now. Let's scroll over to prep. All right, so this is the prep screen and there's four different types of prep missions we can do. There's approach vehicles, equipment, weapon loadout, and disruption. We're not gonna mess around with disruption at all. Ignore that. You do not need to do any disruption to do the Cayo Perico heist efficiently. So we need to select one approach vehicle. So these are all the approach vehicles. Now, we're going to be doing this solo, so we want to go out and steal the long fin. So yeah, that is going to be the approach vehicle that we're going to use. And then we're going to get three different things of equipment. We don't need demolition charges, but we need to get the safe code. We need to get the fingerprint cloner, and then we need to get the cutting torch. So these three out of equipment we need. And then we need to get a weapon loadout. And some of these are locked, but we don't need the ones that are locked, because in my opinion, the best one is going to be the aggressor weapon loadout. So yeah, we're going to have to get that 
that. So that is exactly how I like to set up the Cayo Perico heist. So yeah, I'm gonna do all of these setups and then I'll see you when we're ready to do the finale. All right, so we fully set up the Cayo Perico heist, all the setups that I told you to get. So now we have to make our selections for how we are going to do this Cayo Perico heist. I'm gonna walk you through exactly how I like to set up the actual finale. So our approach vehicle, as I discussed earlier, is going to be the long fin and our infiltration point is going to be the main dock. That is the dock that we took a photo of. Then the compound entry point, we are going to use the drainage tunnel. Our escape point, escape point doesn't matter at all, really. So uh, we're just going to select airstrip. Uh, time of day, this really doesn't matter. Uh, we're going to do this during the day. Oh okay, yeah, then also one more thing, the weapon loadout. We actually didn't buy suppressors beforehand because you can come here and you can just click the X button twice and boom, you have suppressors. You don't have to pay for it. All right, so yeah, this is how we are going to do the Kyle Breaker High. So let's click continue and let's jump into it. We get a little cutscene, but we can skip it. All right, here we go. The Kyle Perico heist. All right, so first things first, we're spawning in. What I like to do is we are going to go straight to the left and we're going to go to the airstrip where we scoped out the secondary loot. Our goal right now is to get the secondary loot first before we actually get the primary loot because it's going to be a lot easier to get the secondary loot now than it will be later on just because we have this boat to just easily get to this point right here. We want to park this boat in a decent spot to where we can actually get it so we can go to the drainage tunnel. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to take out this guard right there. And that's the only guard you need to take out up here at the airstrip. So now we're going to go over here and now we need to get the loot inside of here. In order to get the secondary loot on the top level, we need to use this forklift because where we actually took a photo of that loot, we can't actually like get the loot from that point. There's no door right there. So we're going to use a forklift and we're going to climb up here. Then we're going to climb up here, go up here to this side where the gate actually is. So yeah, now we're going to just get the loot from over here. So we're going to get the cola first and then we're just going to fill our loot bag up with as much cash as possible. Oh yeah, I also forgot to mention our primary target for this Kaya Brigo heist is going to be the Madrazo files. Now the Madrazo files you only get once and it's only going to be the first time you do the Kaya Perico heist. And the Madrazo files is the second most valuable primary target. The pink diamond is going to be the most valuable primary target, but it is very, very rare to get the pink diamond. And pretty much everything else after that is going to be worth right around $700,000. Oh yeah, there's also a ton of first time bonuses that we're going to get for this Kaya Perico heist, kind of like the first and last dose missions. All right, so now we're going to get back into our boat and now we're going to make it all the way to the drainage tunnel so we can actually make it into the compound. So yeah, we filled up our loot bag full of secondary loot and we did that one to get more money, but two to have an opportunity to get the elite challenge. Now in order to get the elite challenge for the Kaio Perico heist, you need to have your secondary loot bag maxed out, which we already have. And we need to do the Kaio Perico heist in under 15 minutes, which if you're doing it the way I'm doing it, it shouldn't take you that long. Like honestly, it shouldn't take you more than 11 minutes if you're going to do it the way I'm going to do it. So yeah, we've made it over to the drainage tunnel. So we jump out the boat. We don't need our boat anymore. All right. So we need to cut through this grate right here. This is the reason why we got the cutting torch along with actually being able to go and cut through the gate so we can get the secondary loot. All right, here we go. We are actually now inside of the compound. So in order to do this the best way possible, you're going to do exactly what I'm going to do. We just run over here, run past these two guards. We're going to run to the left, go over here, jump this little wall. We're going to go over here and then there's a guard right there. He just turned around. That is awesome. So we're going to wait for this guard right here to go to this little corner. Take him out. Very good. We're going to go over here. We're going to take out that guard. Then we're going to walk up here. We're going to walk up these steps. Turn around right here. Kill that guy. And then that guy just dropped the gate keys, which is going to be pretty important for us. But anyways, right here is a hidden safe. So we want to go in here and collect the money that's inside the hidden safe, which was almost $100,000, which is very, very nice. But now we need to hack this keypad right here. All right, there we go. We just hacked the keypad. So we can now go down to the vault. Now we're down here. We need to cut through this little gate right here. All right, so now we have a safe code 39, 42, 92. All right, there we go. We just put in the combination. So now we have the primary target. So now we need to get out of here. I like to exit this way. All right, there we go. We just hacked through that. All right, so we're going to go this way. We're going to turn right right here. We're going to make it to this little door. We're going to unlock it. So then we can walk over here, go up to this point, and then we're going to climb up here. And then there's a guard right there. My timing's a little off. Usually there's not a 
my guard right here, but it doesn't really matter. He can die. All good. And then, yeah, now we can actually escape the compound. Oh, yeah. One of the first time bonuses that you can get is making sure that you don't alert anyone. So that is our goal right now. We want to make sure we don't alert anyone, which you shouldn't be alerting anyone inside the compound. So now what we're going to do right here is we're going to take out this guy. And now we're going to get onto the bike and then we're going to bike away. We're going to bike off the island and we're going to swim away. And that is it for the Cayo Parico heist. And now we just start swimming. We just start swimming away. All right. And there we go. We just swam far enough away. Oh, yeah. So we get another little cut scene for doing this for the first time. All right. And there we go. Heist passed. All right. So we had an actual take of $1,524,000. I got a hundred percent of that and we did complete the elite challenge because we did it in under 15 minutes we didn't fail a hack and we had full secondary loot bags so that's an extra fifty thousand dollars so in total we made one million five hundred and seventy four thousand dollars and we're also going to get a boatload of first time bonuses all right and there you go yep there comes all the first time bonuses and i'm gonna have to walk you through exactly what first time bonuses we got in order to look at like first time bonuses and whatnot you want to go to the stats tab right here we want to scroll down to awards you want to scroll all the way down to the Cayo Perico heist. That's what we're looking for. All right, so we got this first time bonus, the Cayo Perico heist. Complete the Cayo Perico heist for the first time to earn $200,000. So we did. Then we got this one right here. Complete the Cayo Perico heist with one player to earn an extra $100,000. We did this one. Complete the Cayo Perico heist without ever alerting the guards to earn $200,000. And that is only within the compound. So don't worry about once you leave the compound. Because technically right at the end, a body was found, but it didn't matter. It wasn't in the compound another two hundred thousand dollars and then we got this one right here elitist complete the elite challenge for the Cayo perico heist to earn two hundred thousand dollars so in total we made seven hundred thousand dollars worth of first time bonuses so now we're sitting at two million four hundred and forty four thousand dollars which is a ton of money so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy our next business and our next business is gonna be under the dynasty eight executive tab it's gonna be an agency and we're gonna select this agency right here the little soul agency this agency is going to be the cheapest agency you can get we don't really need too much of this stuff um i'm actually gonna get accommodation we've made a lot of money i have enough money to actually get accommodation and i don't think it'll screw us up for the final thing i want to purchase in this video so yeah let's purchase this agency right here and there we go so now let's go visit our agency to meet my new business partner and access the security contracts all right so we're at our agency we're gonna have to sit through a cutscene to meet everyone here which the agency is pretty much run by Franklin. But yeah, we have a cutscene we have to sit through, so this will be fun. All right, so I was going back over the footage. And I just realized my audio from starting up the contract was screwed up. So I'm going to walk you through exactly what I did after the fact. So we went over to our agency and we got the introduction cutscene. And then after that, before we can actually start up the VIP contract, we had to do a security contract. And there's three different levels of security contracts that you can do. And when I did it, all three levels of contracts were on there. The worst one's going to be professional. That's going to pay out the least. Then you have a specialist contract, which is going to pay out a little bit more. Then you have have a specialist plus contract and the reason we're doing that is because you need to do one security contract before you can actually start up the vip work and the vip work is where you're going to make the most money from the agency so once we did that security contract i left my agency and franklin called me because he wanted to meet us at the los santos golf club and this is where we started up the vip work which the vip work is the contract which are a bunch of missions for dr dre now the first time you do the contract for dr dre you have to do two introductions Introduction missions. That's why we're going to the golf club because the first introduction mission is going to be at the Los Santos Golf Club. And essentially, some people pissed off Dr. Dre at the golf club, and we have to intimidate them by ramming into their own golf cart. So we completed that, and we got a first time bonus for doing that. And then we had another introduction mission, which was going to the FIB building and stealing a bunch of hard drives and taking it back to our agency. So Imani could take a look at these hard drives and figure out where Dr. Dre's stolen phone is. So we completed that mission, and Imani figured out that Dr. Dre's music has been spread out to three different people. So we have to investigate each of these people. So at that point, we jump into doing each leak. And we started out by doing the nightlife leak. Now, each leak has two setups and a finale. So we started out with the nightlife leak, and we quickly did the first two setups for the nightlife leak. And then for the finale, we headed on over to the Diamond Casino and went to a penthouse party where they were playing Dr. Dre's music. We tried to snatch the computer, but then the DJ pulled out his private military. We had to walk through his military, steal 
fill his backpack, which has Dr. Dre's music on it. And then we deliver it back to the agency. Mission pass. And then we jumped into the next leak, which is going to be the High Society leak. So once again, we did the first two setups for the High Society leak. And then for the finale, we had to go to the Richmond mansion and once again, find where Dr. Dre's music was being played. And then we had to intimidate this promoter by killing his entire security staff. And then he tried to run away from us, but then we shot down his helicopter, which crash landed by Fort Sankudo. So we went over there and collected the music where Dr. Dre's songs are. And then we took it back to our agency. And there we go. Another leak has been passed. And then after that, I stopped right there and I realized that my audio screwed up. So we still have to do the South Central leak along with the two finale missions. All right, so here we go. We're back to live commentary. So we still need to do the South Central leak right here. So let's start that up. And yeah, as I said before, we have to do two setups and a finale. So yeah, I'm going to quickly go through these setups and I'll see you when we're ready to do the finale. All right, here we go. We're starting up the South Central leak. And for this leak, we have to meet Vernon and P at Davis Mega Mall. Then we're going to group up and attack the Vagas. All right, so here we go. In this snowy mess, uh, the Vagas are here just playing Dr. Dre's music. Yeah, we don't like him messing around with Dr. Dre's music. So we are going to have to take out all these Vagas members. So yeah, we just have to sit here and take out a bunch of people. And yeah, once you take out enough people at this point, this guy wants to run away and is a low rider. Obviously, we're not going to allow that to happen. So we're going to get into a car right here. Now, for this part of the mission, it's pretty important that you take out the guy driving the low rider before he hits his destination, which is not too far away. But I don't know, you still have plenty of time because you're able to catch up to him like right in here. And then you just shoot. Ideally, you hit your shots. There we go. That's how you hit your shots. So yeah, now we need to get into the low rider. And then all we need to do now is just take the low rider back to the agency. All right, there we go. We just made it back to our agency. And there we go. Mission passes. The final leak we had to complete. We get $8,000 for completing this, but we do also get a first time bonus. For all the leaks, we get a first time bonus. And then the final two finale missions, we're going to get a first time bonus also. All right, so here we go. We have to go through another cutscene. This cutscene is pretty much just saying like, hey, Johnny Guns is the bad guy that we're trying to go after. All right, so we're jumping into the first finale mission right here. So right now we just have to collect Dr. Dre's car and we have to take it back to his studio. All right, and as we drove there, Johnny Gunn sent some of his crew over there and now we have to go and defend Dr. Dre at his own studio. So yeah, pretty much this mission, we have to take out a bunch of people. It's a little annoying though because these guys do hit their shots unlike some of these other people that we had to deal with during the contract. All right, there we go. We just took out everyone outside. So yeah, now we need to enter Record A Studios and take out even more people up there. All right, there we go. That's the last person we had to take out. So yeah, now we need to go back to the control room. And then yeah, we have to sit through a pretty long cutscene. Now the other cutscenes that we've gone through so far, they're pretty much only for the first time you do the contract. Yeah, this cutscene, you have to sit through every time you do the contract. This takes like five minutes, I think. So yeah, during this cutscene, I kind of just like get up and walk around, you know, be a little bit more productive in society than just sit here and watch a cutscene because it's a long, long cutscene. All right, and there we go. Mission passed. We got $6,000 there plus a first time bonus. So yeah, we have one more mission we have to get to. All right, so we're jumping into the finale mission right here, which is going to be Don't F with Dre. So now for this mission, we're trying to hunt down Johnny Guns since, you know, he sent his men after Dr. Dre last mission. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Can't allow that to happen. All right, so here's Dr. Dre right here, or here's one of his guys. I don't know, but yeah, you can just shoot him from right here and then it just throws you into the cutscene. So he's going to drive away like a coward, you know, blah, 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 blah. Then you have to take out all of his hired gunmen, which is a decent amount of hired gunmen that he has. All right, so we took out all of Johnny Guns' men here, but now we need to go to L. LSIA, and then we need to take out more of Johnny Guns' men. All right, so we made it LSIA. Yeah, now we have to take out more of Johnny Guns' men. Then once we take out all of his men, we should be able to track down Johnny Guns himself. All right, so all of Johnny Guns' men have been taken out here. So we need to go up this platform. And Johnny Guns is at the top of this platform. So we need to just shoot him enough to injure him. Okay, I thought he was injured. Hey, he's good enough. So yeah, now we need to grab Johnny Guns and we get another cutscene. All right, so here we go. Now we just need to drive Dr. Dre to Pacific Bluffs Country Club. And after that, we should be good to go. All right. So we made it over to Pacific Bluffs Country Club. Dr. Dre is going to get in his very luxurious helicopter. I'm going to send him off. And he gets to fly away to, um, well, that's a yacht over there. But you can't really see it because of the snow. But there we go. Mission passed. And this is the final mission of the contract. So we get our million dollar payout. Plus, we got a lot of first time bonuses. So I'm going to go over how much money I have after doing all that. All right. So after completing the contract, we're now sitting at $2,032,000. We got a lot of first time bonuses. I 
aside from just the million dollar payout that we get for doing the contract these first time bonuses will be under the contract tab right here so we did on course so we had to meet dr dre at the ls golf club for fifty thousand. then each leak gave us a hundred thousand dollars so the nightlife leak high society leak and the south central leak gave us three hundred thousand dollars in total then we had studio time for a hundred thousand dollars that was the one where we went to record a studios and saved dr dre and then don't f with dre for two hundred and fifty thousand dollars so in total we made eight hundred thousand dollars worth of first time bonuses so now we're going to buy the final thing i'm going to tell you to buy in this video so we need to go over to auto shops and this is going to be the last business i'm going to tell you to buy in order to make as much money as possible and the cheapest auto shop is going to be here at mission row so let's purchase this uh and since i have actually a lot of money left over i'm going to get a personal quarters the personal quarters is not required um the rest of this stuff really doesn't matter too much so yeah we're just gonna get the personal quarters and that's pretty much it so yeah this auto shop is gonna cost us two million and ten thousand dollars we barely have enough money for that and there we go so now let's head on over to our auto shop and i'm gonna show you how to make money from the auto shop to finish out this video all right so here we go this is gonna be our auto shop and yeah we have to go through another cutscene, kind of introducing what the auto shop is all right so now before we actually can like make money from the auto shop we have to do an introduction mission which essentially we have to retrieve Santa's impounding car so yeah let's go do that all right so we recover Santa's car and we have to go through another cutscene. all right so we fully set up the auto shop so now behind me on this board right here this is how we're gonna make money so essentially we get three contracts that we can do and pretty much one of them is way better than the others there's like a total of I think either seven or eight contracts the best one possible is going to be the union depository contract right here this is going to be the best way to make money from the auto shop so yeah we absolutely want to do the union depository contract we get a payment of three hundred thousand dollars you're probably thinking that's not a whole lot of money but in total this will probably take you between like 25 and 30 minutes so this is a very quick way to make money in comparison to the Cayo Perico heist because that'll take like an hour and the contract which that'll take like roughly an hour and 30 and plus all those have cooldowns too so while you're waiting for the cooldowns for those two things to end you can come here and do a union depository contract which will still pay out pretty well so yeah we want to select this contract right here and for these these are like mini heists essentially you get two setups and a finale so yeah the two setups right here are going to be elevator key and vault code and the finale is going to be the actual robbery the robbery is unlocked once we complete the first two setups all right so before we actually get into the setups i want to show you exactly like how to reset like the contracts because it's not always going to be on the union depository contract so i want to show you exactly what you can do so you can reset it back to a union depository contract so first things first as you can see over there we selected a contract already so then what we need to do is we need to head outside yeah you can't do what i'm about to do inside the auto shop so we're gonna go here and we're gonna contact the santa and then from here you can actually cancel a job but as you can see right there it is locked for us to do because we need to complete a contract first so yeah maybe this first time around if you don't see the union depository contract just do one of them and then after that you can come here and actually cancel the job so then you can actually cycle to a union depository contract all right so i'm gonna finish these setups right now and then i'll see you when we're ready to do the robbery all right so we completed the first two setups for the union depository contract it is now time for us to do the robbery so we have to break into the union depository vault steal the shipment of gold inside and deliver it to the client so i'm going to show you how to do this so yeah let's jump into it all right so first things first you have to pay attention to the weapon loadout right here you can choose what your weapon loadout is and by default you're on sharpshooter which you get essentially a heavy sniper and you know not the best like assault rifles right so we want to go to hustler right here because this one you get a bullpup rifle mark two and a bunch of other stuff that really doesn't matter yeah that's all we need okay all right here we go we're jumping into the union depository contract the final way that i'm going to show you how to make money in this video all right so first things first we need to deliver our getaway car which is the santa's car we're going to park it right here very suspiciously but no one goes in this parking lot and we're going to get into this security car right here and this is how we're going to get to the union depository all right so we've made it over to the union depository we need to park right here once again very suspiciously but no one cares all right so now we need to walk up here and we need to go to the elevator all right so now we need to go over to the vault door right here all right so we're inside the vault now and now we have to steal a bunch of gold and there's going to be a few bundles of gold so yeah let's go here and let's just start collecting this gold all right and we have the cops on us now so yeah we're gonna have to shoot our way out of here but yeah let me collect the rest of this gold all right there we go all the gold has been collected so now we need to go back upstairs all right so yeah there's a bunch of like noose members and a bunch of cops coming after us which is going to be fun so yeah we're gonna have to shoot our way out of here so we can make it back to our getaway car 
So I'd like to go this way when we get out of here. So yeah, there's gonna be more cops that just spawn in trying to take you out. I say, here's even more cops we have to take out. So now we need to cross the street right here, and we're gonna try to make it over to where our getaway car is. All right, so we've made it to our getaway car. Now I'm gonna show you where I want you to go. And the way I'm gonna show you to go, um, um, uh, well, I died, so that's fantastic. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I gotta do that all over again, which is fun. Oh good, we spawned here. Alright, so I'm gonna show you exactly where I want you to go because the way I'm gonna show you to go is gonna be a lot easier to like lose the cops, just get out of here, all that stuff. So the way I want you to go, instead of following this yellow line, I want you to go here. Follow that. Go to that spot right there. Alright, so we made it over to this location. Now, I want you to do exactly as I do. So we're gonna get out the car right there. We're gonna run over here and then we're gonna jump up here. And we're gonna jump up here. We're gonna run over this way. We're gonna jump up here. We're gonna jump up here. We're gonna keep running. And then we're gonna jump up here, jump up here, turn this way, jump up here. And there's a helicopter right there. So instead of just driving all across the map of GTA Online, we can now just, you know, get into a helicopter and just fly there. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot easier. So yeah, now we just need to fly all the way to the client. And in the meantime, as we get there, we should be able to lose the cops. All right, and there we go. We've made it to the client. All right, so we're gonna give this client the bag. She's gonna hand us a nice envelope, I assume, full of cash. And there we go, contract passed. Before that contract, we made $270,000. So Santa takes 10% of it, which kind of sucks. But still, $270,000 is very good for only 30 minutes of work. And then after every auto shop contract, the first time you do it, you get a $75,000 first time bonus. So in total, we made $345,000 off of that auto shop contract. But at this point now in your GTA Online career now, you have all the essentials to make as much money as possible. At this point, you can start buying passive businesses. So while you do what I just showed you to do, you can make money in the background. You can buy a bunch of fun vehicles if you want. But at this point, you shouldn't be held back by money at all. You have all the tools now that you need in order to make a ton of money whenever you want. So that is the best way how to start out as a level one in GTA Online. So we are now a level 23, but we now have the Kasatka, we have the agency, we have an auto shop, where we can do now the Cayo Perico Heist, the contract and auto shop contracts. And this roughly took me like right around, I think 10 hours of work. Yeah, not too bad at all. Make sure you check out this video right here. If you wanna see how I make millions with the salvage yard every week in GTA Online.